Hey everyone, Cerebral Tackle here. I promised you guys I would give an update as soon as I had one. There's a little bit of news coming out of Ohio concerning that big walleye tournament cheating scandal we've all been following. But real quick, before we get started, I just want to thank everyone. To every single viewer, to every single new subscriber, everyone that has watched this channel over the past 36 hours, my wife and I, we were absolutely blown over by your support. We appreciate you guys more than you know. Thank you so much. It absolutely means the world to us. Now on to the news of the day. Earlier today, Jason Fisher, the tournament director and owner of the Loot Series, the Lake Erie Walleye Tournament Trail Series, made a public statement. You might remember him as the guy that cut open the fish bellies grabbed the weights and threw his arm in the air and said, there's weights in fish, that guy. Well, this is his tournament trail. And earlier today, he made a public statement. The first thing Mr. Fisher wanted to do was to apologize to his sponsors and his anglers for language he used during his outburst that he said was not adult or youth friendly. He also wanted to thank his anglers and sponsors and to everyone who's reached out to him with support during this time. Next, he took time to touch on to why he got into ownership of a trail to begin with. He purchased loot just a couple of years back. When he purchased it, he purchased it from folks that had had it for a long time. He wanted to continue that legacy. He also spoke about why he got into tournament trail ownership to begin with. He wanted to continue the legacy that came before him. He also loves giving back to his community, doing charity work, and also growing the sport through youth. He then touched on how important it was to continue to protect the integrity of the sport. He promised there would be new rule changes and weigh-in procedures in the future to try their best to prevent a situation like this last weekend from ever occurring again. He went on to say that the proper witness statements and files had been turned over to law enforcement for further investigation into the incident. He confirmed that it was 12 ounce weights used in the fish. Now, if there were two weights per fish doing that math, that would mean an extra pound and a half per fish was added to their weight. And that was it. Nine minutes long, short, sweet, and to the point. But now we've covered the news, it's time to get on to the editorial part of the program. What I'm about to say next goes out to Mr. Fisher and to everyone as a whole. Mr. Fisher, I understand you felt the need to apologize to sponsors and other anglers. I appreciate that. However, to many of us, no apology needed. What these guys did was attacking your passion. When you purchase this trail, you're trying to make the folks that come before you proud. And I get that. You want to continue that legacy. You're not doing it to make a buck. You're doing it because your heart's in it. Anyone that's ran a tournament trail or ran a club knows and understands that. What these guys did by pulling that stunt was cutting at the heart of what it is you do. The integrity of what it is you're trying to protect. I would have got pissed too and you handled it a lot better than I would have. I probably would have snapped like a light stick. A big part of it is not a lot of folks know what goes into running a tournament organization, whether it be a club or a trail. A lot of thankless duties, a lot of sleepless nights, time away from your family, money out of your own pocket. I was in a nonprofit club, okay? I was president of a nonprofit for many years. Money out of my own pocket, no salary. Folks don't understand that. We do it for the people. We do it for anglers. We do it because we want to grow the sport. We want to teach people. We want to bring people on that same journey that we had and get people as passionate about the sport as we are. Now, I've seen from the comment section that a lot of folks are concerned with what happens next, pertaining to like the integrity and rules going forward. I want to touch on a few of those things real quick. First, to the anglers of loot, be assured, I think Jason has your back. He's going to make the right decisions. Trust his decisions. 
he has even a more vested interest in the integrity of his trail going forward than the anglers do. He doesn't want you guys screwed over. Did you not see his passion when he put those weights in the air and yelled, there's weights in fish? Did you not see how pissed he was? He's got your backs. He'll make the right calls. Now, when the dust settles and he has a chance to reflect and make those judgment calls as to how the rules change going forward, you got to bear in mind, folks, he has to make a decision based upon the whole picture. He has to very carefully weigh the balance between too many rules, which will hurt participation, and too few, which will hurt the integrity of the process. Give him a chance to do his job. You see, when you go down through the rules of a bass club or a tournament trail, what you don't see is what's invisible. And that's beside every single rule. There's a name, invisible, in invisible parentheses beside every single rule. Why? Because someone's created that freaking rule. Why? Because someone's done something stupid. Do you remember the old Bill Ingvall skit, the comedian, who talked about warning labels on products like Preparation H, how don't put it in your mouth, don't ingest it, otherwise your mouth will go shut and you'll be whistling Dixie? That's because somewhere down the line, someone squeezed off a tube of Preparation H into their mouth. Like in fishing tournaments, rod and reel only. Why? Joe Blow somewhere decided he wanted to use a stick of dynamite. Or it could be as simple as a new uneducated angler not understanding that a white bass or sand bass as they're called in some states is not to be kept and retained in the purposes of a largemouth tournament. Largemouth, Kentucky, smallmouth, those fish, spotted bass, those are allowed. White bass not. So sometimes rules need to be made for either the uneducated angler that's new to the sport or the angler that's trying to find a loophole big enough to fit his whole butt through. Now I've seen some comments in the comment section. I want to address them real quick. Some of them are ideas about how to maybe prevent this kind of thing from happening in the future. So let's get down to them real quick. The first I want to address is metal detectors. It sounds like a great idea on the surface, and it has merit. One problem. Fish will ingest baits off the bottom. Uh, let's say a power bait, something that has flavor sent to it. Let's say there's a Texas rig power bait that's broke off in the water, still has the hook in it, right? Fish comes by, ingests it. A week or two later, you're fishing. You catch that fish. That bait is in that fish's belly. You turn that fish in. They hit it with a metal detector. You're disqualified. Your reputation and your career ended on the spot. Was it your fault? Nope. So metal detectors aren't perfect. Another suggestion I saw was cameras all over the boat in every angle. First, this isn't the book 1984. Let's kind of tap the brakes. I understand the suggestion. Every camera has a blind spot, though. I'm not sure it'd work. That's the first part of that. The second part of the answer is, you want to get on a tournament director's hit list by suggesting that? I only say that because before the checks are cut and the money's handed out, can you imagine the hours of footage a tournament director would have to go through to verify that every single fish was caught legitimately? What's someone going to do? Say, well, I believe that fish was number three in the five fish they caught that day, so let's review the footage, find fish number three, and see if they did it right. It doesn't work that way. They would literally have to review every single catch if a protest was filed. That could take a long time. You're going to do that before handing out the checks or finalizing the standings? It's a lot easier to make the right call before handing out the money than it is to get the money back. Something like that, well, not a horrible idea, don't get me wrong. I believe it would take too much time in getting the standings and finalizing things out 
that it would put people off. So in theory, another great idea, just like the metal detector. In practical purposes, in use, I'm not sure it'll work. Finally, please don't think I chose those two suggestions because I think they're bad. I don't. I just don't think we're quite there yet. Metal detectors, eh, fish eat weird things. I don't want to have to cut a fish open to find a hook that someone else has gut hooked them with or a bottle cap. Not to mention, conservation department would have a cow. As opposed to cameras, there's still going to be lots of blind spots. Take it from a former photographer. Yeah, I don't think we're there yet. We'll get there. We'll figure out something, though. So please, folks, keep the suggestions coming. I love them. They're fantastic, and I appreciate them more than you know. They really help the channel. They help me. And who knows, maybe all of us brainstorming together will hit on exactly the right thing. Maybe we can actually make a difference at some point. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you for sticking with me. I appreciate it so much. Appreciate all the support. You guys are awesome. You know the drill, right? Until next time, keep it wet.